وبعد طوافنا نسعى وفي الميلين هرونا نكمل سعينا سبعا وهللنا وكبرنا وفي عرفات وقفتنا لفضل الله راجينا بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد uh, Let me pick up on the very point that our esteemed uh, MC was, was highlighting on and that is the aspect of uh, the calendar, the aspect of uh, time The creator of time is Allah We know and we believe, it's part of our aqeedah that everything in existence is created by Allah Taala. but very rarely do we think of, of time as a creation of Allah uh, perhaps because it's not something tangible. So when you look at the mountains, you can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it, you can, you know, uh, picture it. So therefore, uh, we understand the mountains are created by Allah. You look up towards the skies, the skies are created by Allah. You look up towards uh, the oceans and, and you say the oceans are created by Allah. You look at your own body, you look at humans, you look at animals, and we, we understand that this is the creation of Allah. But time is also the creation of Allah. Um, we may not understand what it would be like if, if time is to stand still, if Allah has to remove time from the equation, but this much we ought to understand, know and believe, is, and that is time is, is created by Allah. So if time is created by Allah, then even the design of the calendar, both lunar and solar, is uh, created by Allah. It functions according to the decree of Allah, Taala, and it exists only because Allah wants it to exist. And this is... Uh, highlighted in a verse of Surah Tawbah, where Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala mentions, Inna iddata shuhuri inda Allahi thna ashara shahra fi kitab illahi yawma khalaqa as-samawati wal-ard minha arba'atun hurum. Allah says that the, the number of months in terms of the decision and the decree of Allah is 12. And this was already decreed, yawma khalaqa as-samawati wal-ard, at the time, at the very inception, when Allah wa ta'ala decided to create the heavens and the earth. And Allah then highlights further that minha arba'atun hurum. From this 12 months calendar or cycle which Allah wa ta'ala has created and here it is in reference to the lunar cycle, four are sacred. Sacred. Which are those four? The one is Rajab, which is a standalone month and the other are three consecutive months. Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. So we are now in a 90 day period. 30 days almost has lapsed, but we are in an approximately 90 day period of, um, of, 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 of virtue, uh, of, of sacredness. This is what Allah wa ta'ala is highlighting us. I have explained this principle previously, I think, in one of our discourses uh, prior to the month of Ramadan, and I explain it to, again now. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhum, I used to say that during the Ashwari Hurum, any good deed you do, the reward is multiplied by Allah. Any sin you do, the evil is also multiplied. So make sure that you minimize sin. And after that, uh, try and, and make as much effort as you possibly can in terms of exerting yourself when it comes to good deeds. Because ordinarily, you get reward for every good deed that you do. Allah says, Man ja'a bil hasanati falahu ashram thaliham. That the minimum reward is multiplied by 10. And then beyond that, depending on, on a person's sincerity, etc. That's under ordinary circumstances. Now, when you go to a place that's sacred, for example, you go to Makkah, you go to Medina, then it's multiplied by virtue of the place. And if you are in a time period that is sacred, like these Ashur Hurum, Dul Qa'da, Dul Hijjah, Muharram, then by virtue of this period, by virtue of this, uh, these months, uh, the reward of good, deed, good deeds is multiplied even further, like we saw with the month of Ramadan, that uh, the reward of a Nafil is equivalent to that of a Farad. And... Um, the reward of a farad is multiplied minimum by 70 times. So the reason that I, I begin with this point is I'm to highlight that not only are the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah sacred, but this entire period is sacred. Dhul Qa'ada, Dhul Hijjah and Muharram. The first 10 days have additional virtue. So it's a kind of blessing upon blessing, virtue upon virtue. You already are in a very virtuous, in a very sacred period because these are the Ashura Hurum. And on top of it, you've now got the 10 days within uh, this, this sacred period. So it's a double blessing, blessing upon blessing. How do we know that these 10 days are sanctified? How do we know that these 10 days are sacred? How do we know that these 10 days have great virtue? Well, 
there are number of uh, hadith in this regard time will not allow us to go through all of them then there is the the quranic reference where allah takes an oath well fajri um the point here the scholars highlight is that allah only takes an oath on matters of importance and matters of benefit so because these days are of importance and benefit allah tabarak wa taala takes an oath on it walayalin ashr by the 10 nights even though reference is made here to the nights the ulama explain ibn kathir and others that um, the scholars are of the view that allah is referring to the sanctity of these 10 days allah is referring to the sanctity of these 10 days there is a lot of scholarly discussion there is a lot of uh, academic uh, debate a sector by sector but it comes down to this the ulama go to this point and to this extent and say that these 10 days are the greatest days of the year why because nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam has indicated as such there is a narration of ibn abbas radhiyallahu anhuma in the sahih of imam bukhari there are no days in which righteous deeds are more beloved to allah than these 10 days there are no days in which righteous deeds are more beloved to allah than these 10 days and sahaba said ya rasulullah not even going out in your path and striving because when you go out in the path of allah and you strive then you you put your wealth at stake and you put your life at stake you could end up paying the the ultimate price uh, for illegitimate defense so nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said no except if a person goes out with his wealth and his life and he returns with none so that person has, has made the ultimate sacrifice but other than that these are the 10 greatest days of the year now the ulama have taken it to this point and said that the days of dhul hijjah these first 10 days are even greater than the days of ramadan yes the nights of ramadan especially the last 10 nights uh, are greater because of laylatul qadr laylatul qadr is on another level now subhanallah you know let let that let, let that actually just sink in let it hit home uh, we know how great every day in ramadan is we know how great the last 10 days in ramadan are and here nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is telling us these are the best days these 10 days of dhul hijjah the best days and the ulama are telling us in terms of virtue they are better than even the last 10 days of ramadan but not the last 10 nights of ramadan the challenge we have with regards these 10 days is that there isn't the mood and the atmosphere like we have in ramadan because in ramadan everyone is fasting in ramadan people generally congregate in large numbers during the evening for tarawih salah this this is a different kind of mood because it's the greatest month of the year overall and 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 perhaps in dil hijja there isn't that kind of a mood but we should try and create that kind of a mood and that kind of atmosphere and even if they look maybe allah wanted it for, for us to wanted it wanted for us to have this added challenge so we can get the added reward that okay in ramadan things become very conducive in ramadan everyone is fasting so it becomes easy to fast in ramadan everyone is performing tarawih it becomes easier in ramadan everyone is reading quran it becomes easier do it now in the first 10 days of dhul hijjah it's only one third of the time it's not 30 days but you're getting great reward it's ashur hurum firstly sacred months and then on top of it it's the 10 days there are many other narrations and hadith of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that talk about uh, the virtues of this day but for the sake of brevity i'm not going to go into all of them now now one is ashur hurum it's sacred already because these are three of the four sacred months of the year then the 10 days in itself uh walayal in ashr are sacred so it's a double blessing on top of it now you've got hajj that commences during these 10 days and hajj is one of the fundamentals one of the pillars of islam and over and above that you've got the udhiyah and qurbani that also takes place during these 10 days so you know it's blessing upon blessing upon blessing upon blessing a uh, virtue upon virtue upon virtue upon virtue right now as we talking we need to thank allah tbarak wa taala for having prolonged our lives by yet another year so that we are once again on the cusp of this great uh, month in these 10 days uh, these these great 10 days i'm not sure whether the moon was already sighted last night uh, or whether it was already declared as dhul hijjah uh, in your part of the world but in south africa tonight we'll be seeking the moon if we uh, if we find the moon tonight then it's the first of the hijjah tonight if not then uh, then tomorrow night remember as muslims also there's a great degree of uh, pride 
that is linked to these 10 days because it is on the 9th of the Hijjah, the day of Arafah, where Allah wa ta'ala revealed the verse to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa on the plains of Arafah, which is on the day of Jumu'ah, the time between Asr and Maghrib, when Allah said, Al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radiyatu lakum al-islam adina. Today, I have uh, completed my favor upon you. And I have uh, perfected for you your religion. And I declare to you that I am happy with Islam as, as your deen. So this is just a bit of background, just to whet the appetite, right? Uh, you on your own can read further. Uh, the content is, is widely and easily available about the virtues of these 10 days. But I just wanted to paint a picture, create perspective, uh, put in place the context up front that um, these are the 10 greatest days of the year. And that's why the title on the poster so aptly reads, uh, 10 best days. Now let's get to the next part of the title. How can I form a deep connection with Allah and maximize on these days? So there's three parts, right? 10 best days, the first part of the title. I've given you a bit of an indication to that. The second part is how can I form a deep connection with Allah? And the third part is how do I maximize on these days? Now that brings us to the, to the second part of the discussion. What do we do during these 10 days? What should we do? I want to go through a bit of a list, 10 points. 10 days, 10 points, right? Perhaps you should note this down. And then after that, we'll talk a little bit about connecting with Allah wa ta'ala in the spirit of the, the man of the season. The man of the season here is Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam because both the Hajj and Udhiyya uh, 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 coincide with the, this month of Dhul Hijjah and um, these 10 days. So the best deed you can do, the best deed you can do during these 10 days is Hajj. Um, now, this year, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, very few people are going for Hajj. It's only the people from within the kingdom, 60,000 or something like that. Uh, but make niyyah. If you still haven't performed your Hajj, make niyyah that I want to perform Hajj, Farad Hajj. Even if you've performed the Farad Hajj, let's all make niyyah that, oh Allah, as soon as possible and as soon as beneficial for me and as many times as beneficial for me in my lifetime, I would like to perform Hajj. I'm making the niyyah, inshallah. I leave it in your hands, oh Allah. Then beyond the niya, let's also make a niya of perhaps if Allah has given us means to help someone who will go for hajj in the future. Like I say this year, very unfortunate, but it is what it is. Hopefully next year it would be significantly different. But if you've got the means, if you've got the money, you've already performed your hajj, uh, you can't go for hajj again, or you can, but you've got the money, help somebody else, enable somebody else to be able to go and perform the hajj. If you do not have the money to be able to help them and to be able to enable them, then uh, help them in some other way. You know, I always say this, um, help them by taking care of their kids in their absence, taking care of their business. You don't have to help them with taking care of all of their needs. If that's difficult for you, take care of some of the needs. What do we do this year? We can't perform Hajj, even if we had the means, right? So there are many actions. I'm not going to list all of them. You can check them out for yourself. But there are many actions that have been listed in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that if you do it, you get the reward of Hajj without actually having performed Hajj. It's like this: if you recite Surah Ikhlas three times, you get the reward of uh, uh, reciting uh, the entire Quran. You don't get the benefit of reading the entire Quran, but you get the the reward of reciting the uh, entire Quran, the basic reward. So there are actions like that that give you the the same reward as performing Hajj. Example: if you sit after Fajr Salah on the spot where you performed your Fajr and you wait for the time of Ishraq, and then you perform Ishraq Salah. That, that's one, act, one such action. And there are like many other actions like that. Simple actions that will get you the reward of Hajj. So focus on that. And inshallah, the reward will be multiplied because you're doing it now during the Ashur Hurum, and you're doing it uh, during the, 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 the sacred uh, 10 days. The second is fasting. It is highly encouraged that we fast all of the nine days. The 10th day you don't fast because that's the day of Eid. On the day of Eid, it's prohibited to fast. But the first nine days, highly encouraged. So now, two months have lapsed since Ramadan. Uh, we've picked up the weight that we lost. <laughs> Not that we should be fasting only for that reason. But uh, spiritually, you know, put yourself back into the groove and keep uh, all nine fast if you, if you possibly can. If you can't, if, if you can't keep all, all, all fasts, all nine fast, keep as many as you can. Keep, uh, uh, keep for example... The Mondays and Thursdays, uh, between now and, and, and the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, or whatever you can manage. And if, even if that is difficult, then at least the 9th. The most emphasized fast is on the 9th. Uh, the 9th in your country not, doesn't necessarily have to be the 9th um, in, 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 uh, on, on the plains of Hajj. 
or the plains of, of Arafah. Because Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Siyamu Yawmi Arafah. When it comes to the fast of the ninth, إِنْ يَحْتَسِبُ عَلَى اللَّهِ أَنْ يُكَفِّرَ السَّنَةَ الَّتِي قَبْلَهُ وَالَّتِي بَعْدَهُ I have hope, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that Allah will forgive the preceding year's sins and the coming year's sins. Minor sins, but we have so many minor sins. And minor sins can also lead to our, our, our destruction. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that, uh, you know, fast this day. And I have hope, this fasting of this one day, your entire preceding and, and subsequent year's minor sins will be forgiven. So try and fast all nine days. If not, try and fast the Mondays and Thursdays. If not, try and at least fast on that uh, ninth. The third thing out of the ten is the udhiyya for those who have the means. Uh, make your wajib qurbani, make nafal qurbani as well, and try and get personally involved. You know, where, where, where the rules allow. Try and, and, and personally slaughter. If you can't, maybe you don't have a steady hand, or maybe you've got inf- uh, a bit elderly, or you, you, whatever reason you may be, try and be present. Don't dispatch it just like a kind of financial charity because that we do all the time. Every time, you know, send money here, send money there. They probably buy meat with the money. Anytime during the year, you can say, okay, here's the money for a, for a sheep or for whatever. Right? But try and get involved in the Udhi and Qurbani because it's the purpose behind it is not only the expenditure, you know, for you to, to spend money on it. It's not only for you to consume from it or for the poor to consume from it. Uh, people sometimes say, oh no, it's all about uh, taking care of the poor. Not necessarily. That's one kind of side benefit, if you like, because it's not made compulsory upon you to give the meat to the poor. You, it's recommended that you, you give a portion or whatever you can manage to give. But it's not compulsory. You can keep all the meat for yourself and you can consume it. It's about commemorating that spirit of sacrifice of Ibrahim alayhi salam. When you put the blade to the throat of the animal or you see the blade being put, it's about asking yourself the question, Ibrahim alayhi salam, was willing to sacrifice that was which was most beloved to him, his son Ismail, for the pleasure of Allah, out of submission to Allah. What is standing between me and total submission to Allah? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. What is standing between me and total submission to Allah, wa ta'ala? And that is what we need to symbolically then think about and, sacri- and sacrifice and slaughter in our minds as we're slaughtering the animal. The fourth then is... To excessively make dhikr. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, these are the best days of the year. So excessively recite takbir, tahmeed, and tahleel. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Tahmeed, Alhamdulillah. Tahleel, la ilaha illallah. Simple dhikrs. Simple dhikrs. Yet Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us, this is something we ought to be reciting every day, right? Throughout the year. But here Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that especially... During the month of, uh, the, during these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, excessively say, La ilaha illallah, or chant, Allahu Akbar, or Alhamdulillah. The fifth is, and, and these are actions, I must mention as, as we continue, that are not necessarily unique apart from Hajj and Udhiyah to these 10 days. Um, it, it's, it's things you can do outside of these 10 days, outside of these sacred months as well. But like Ramadan, you know, there's such a great, great association with the Quran. You can read Quran outside of Ramadan, but there's greater virtue, there's greater merit, there's greater blessings, there's greater connection. Same thing here. So the fifth, Qiyamul Layl, you know, at night, getting up in the last third of the night. The minimum is to read two rakats, nafil, after your witr salah, before you go to bed at night. But um, if, if, if you can't, then uh, what you do is that, uh, you know, you, you, you make sure you, if, if, if you can rather, you make sure you wake up in the last third of the night portion of the night, even if it's just a little half an hour before Fajr time sets in, uh, read a few rakats, tahajjud, salah, and make dua to Allah. Beg of Allah. That's the next point. Uh, you know, begging of Allah, wa ta'ala. Making dua. Because dua we ought to be making every day, but again, it's the sacred period of the year, the sacred months. So, tahajjud has greater value. Dua has greater value. Then Quran. Quran is not to be limited only to Ramadan. Yes, many of us took, uh, you know, we made noble intentions at the end of Ramadan. Some of us, perhaps, we were able to keep up to those intentions. Some of, some of us, maybe not. But um, let's, let's now kickstart our Quran routine during these 10 days. Not only recitation, but listening to the Quran, uh, improving our recitation of the Quran, Tajweed, learning more about the meaning of the Quran, practicing upon teachings of the Quran, spreading the message of the Quran, um, you know, doing, doing all of those things, the, the holistic relationship with the Quran, which we have spoken about uh, previously. 
Then increase in all good deeds. We, we've stipulated a few, right? But increase in all good deeds. Because any good deed done with ikhlas and sincerity will bring you closer to Allah. It will earn you the pleasure of Allah. فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرٍ يَرَى If you do good deed, a good deed to the equivalent of an atom, of a mustard seed, you'll see the benefit of it in this world as well as in the after. So I've mentioned eight things so far, right? Before I go on to the last two. One is, the very first one is Hajj. And if you can't perform Hajj, make the intention. Allah will reward you for the intention. If you make the intention of performing Hajj and helping someone who's going to perform Hajj, uh, and do those actions that have been listed in the ahadith that get you the reward of a hajj. Like, you know, sitting on the spot after fajr and then waiting for ishraq. The second is to fast, preferably all nine days or as many of the nine days or at least the ninth day. The third is the udhiyah and the qurbani, uh, to get personally involved, to commemorate the spirit of sacrifice and submission of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. The fourth is excessive dhikr of la ilaha illallah subhanallah and uh, Allahu akbar. The fifth, Qiyamul Layl, Tahajjud. Even if you're not regular with your Tahajjud, be regular for these 10 days. If you are, enhance it. The sixth, holistic relationship with the Quran. The seventh, Dua and supplication. And the eighth, all good deeds. All good deeds. Increase in all good deeds. The ninth, give up sin and make Tawbah to Allah. I alluded to this earlier on. That... Any good deed that's carried out during the sacred months, the Ashura Hurum, and during these 10 days, the reward is multiplied, but any sin carried out, that is also multiplied. So we've got to give up sin. We've got to reduce sin. We, we made a lot of effort during Ramadan. Perhaps we've retrogressed a little bit here and there. Let's make tawbah to Allah. We came out of Ramadan, inshallah, totally clean. Now, whatever spiritual dirt we've picked up, let's once again make tawbah and masuha. Let's once again shed those hot tears of regret. In front of Allah wa ta'ala, asking Allah wa ta'ala to forgive us, to cleanse us, um, acknowledging our weakness that we had all these noble intentions at the end of Ramadan, we may not have been able to fulfill them. But this is the mercy of Allah. Allah is giving us another opportunity. Allah is not telling us, okay, now all right, so you had Ramadan, wait another 11 months until uh, Ramadan comes again. No, no. Allah is saying, around the corner here, yeah, I've given you Dhul Qa'da as a, uh, a sacred month. Dhul Hijjah is a sacred month with the 10 days in it. Then you still got Muharram after it. The rest of Dhul Hijjah, right? Even after the day of Eid, the 10 days are over, but the rest of Dhul Hijjah is still a sacred month. The Muharram is also a sacred month. And like that, Allah gives us opportunities all the time. So give up sin and make Tawbah and Nasuha. I've said this many times in the last year. This pandemic is Allah's biggest wake up call to humanity. Somebody gave a beautiful example. They say, you know, if you set up, if you set your alarm clock to wake up in the morning, you wake up, or the alarm rings, you're supposed to wake up, but you're not waking up, so you hit the snooze button. Then you're supposed to wake up again. So when you hit the snooze button, it's going to ring again after a while. Then you hit the snooze button again. And when you hit the All right, so I, I was giving the example, Barakallahu Fikum, about uh, the, uh, the alarm clock, right? That sometimes what happens is we, we, we hit the alarm clock, and uh, we hit the snooze button. Then what happens is that... Uh, uh, we go back to sleep, so the alarm will ring, and we go back to sleep, and the alarm will ring. The whole purpose behind it is that it will continue to ring. It will continue to ring until we don't wake up. And Allah wa ta'ala will continue to put us through uh, challenges and, and through trials and through uh, different kind of, of, of tests until we don't actually wake up. We, we, need, to, we need to wake up uh, from this particular situation. And then uh, the last thing I wanted to mention with regards to the 10 days of the Hijjah, and I said something similar when we spoke uh, about Ramadan, is that have a plan. You have to have a plan. If you don't have a plan, you're not going to be able to maximize on it. It's not too late. Even though we already perhaps entered in some countries or we are on the cusp, uh, make an effort. Make an effort. Sit down and say, right, how, how, am I going to, uh, how am I going to approach this? My daily routine, what it's going to be like. So if I'm starting from, from tahajjud, uh, the basics obviously have got to be there. Uh, the, the performance of salah, etc. But beyond the basics, what am I going to do? How much of Quran am I going to, uh, to read uh, a day? Right? So that, that's one thing that we, we look at. How much of dhikr? This Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah, subhanallah, etc. How am I going to ensure that I, that I keep that going uh, every single day? 
So have your daily targets and have your weekly targets. List your sins, you know, privately and confidentially so that uh, you know what you need to avoid and what you need to stay away from. And then uh, beyond that, ensure that uh, you have a routine. You must have a, a plan, a timetable, an itinerary. Then you'll be able to maximize on these 10 days. Now I go into the last part of the talk, and that is now developing that connection with Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. The Hajj, the Qurbani, which are the salient features of, of, of this month of the Hijjah and even these 10 days, it's not just there so that, uh, you know, we can, we can have some sort of an, uh, um, what you call it, uh, a ritual. No, it's meant to bring us closer to Allah wa ta'ala, to connect us with Allah wa ta'ala. And in this regard, I want to say a few things about uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and, and how uh, we need to make an effort to ensure that uh, we, we come closer to the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Here the scholars tell us one important thing, that when, when the Sahaba asked Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam that ma hadhi al-adahi ya Rasulallah, that ya Rasulallah, what is this, uh, this udhiyya, what is this uh, qurbani, what is this all about? He said, sunnata abikum Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, this is the sunnah of your father Ibrahim alayhi salam. Now sunnah is an action which is carried out with regularity. Like we say, this, this Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the Two rakats of farad before, uh, two rakats salah before farad of fajr. He did it regularly. Very rarely did he leave it out. So that's why we say it's sunnah. Any action which was carried out with regularity is known as an action of sunnah. Now Ibrahim alayhi salam, that, that act of sacrificing his son only happened once. So why do we call it uh, a sunnah if it only happened once? Hakim al-Umad rahmatullahi has given a fantastic answer here. He says that because... When Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Sunnah to Abiku Ibrahim, he's not only referring to the actual act of slaughter. He's referring to the repeated acts of submission in the life of Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. When Allah wa Ta'ala told Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam to break the idols, he broke the idols. When Allah told him to take on Namrud, the tyrant of the time, he took him on. When Allah told him to give da'wah to his father, he gave da'wah to his father. When Allah made him leave Iraq, which was his birthplace, he did that. When Allah sent him to Makkah and asked him to leave his son and wife in a barren land, he did that repeatedly throughout his life. He submitted to the commands of Allah. Whether he understood those commands or not was a separate matter, but he submitted to the commands of Allah. Wa ta'ala. And that is important that uh, this whole period of 10 days, we must fast, we must read Quran, we must make a dhikr, we must take the reward from it. But uh, the, the actual essence of it is to introspect and say, to what extent am I submissive to the commands of Allah? Wa ta'ala? Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, was willing to sacrifice his only son, a son that Allah had blessed him with after so many years. Allah is not asking us to make such colossal sacrifices. Not at all. Allah wa ta'ala, is just telling us to work on our egos. We are too self-centered. We only worry about ourselves. Anna, anna, anna. So make qurbani of that, become selfless. We suffer from self-admiration. -admir you know, we're clamming for attention all the time. We want everything to revolve around us. So work on your ikhlas and your sincerity, self-glorification. We're always praising ourselves. If not directly, then indirectly. No, praise Allah, praise others. Self-justification. We always create excuses for ourselves. But we don't want to make excuses for others. We are the best lawyers when it comes to our own mistakes, but the best judges when it comes to the mistakes of, uh, of other people. And that is, that is unfortunate. That is really unfortunate. So what we need to learn from here is that approach these 10 days, not only from a ritualistic perspective, I'm going to do this action, that action, that action. I'm going to give up this sin, that sin. Look at yourself. That where am I in terms of becoming a friend of Allah? I won't be able to become a friend to the extent that Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, was a friend. But I need to make an effort on, 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 on sacrificing the dictates of my nafs when it comes to self-centeredness, self-admiration, self-glorification, self-justification. Because qurbani and udhiyya is not just you, you slaughter an animal. So you paid money for it. You went through some process. You slaughtered the animal. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, you know, tick the box and let's move on. It's not about that. It's about attaining closeness to Allah. The word qurbani comes from the word qurb, attaining closeness to Allah. 
Today, people talk about the different tragedies. You know, the pandemic has resulted in a lot of loss of life. A lot of people's health has been compromised. A lot of people's wealth has been compromised. The greatest tragedy of our time is that we don't have genuine love for Allah wa ta'ala in our hearts. And that's what we need to ponder off over in this next uh, 10 days and during these, these sacred months, the Ashwari Huram. What do I need to do? That, that the seeds of that love are definitely there because that's the fitrat on which we are all created. But what do I need to do to be able to, you know, revive that love for Allah wa ta'ala in my heart? The ultimate disgrace is Allah fills the person, a person's heart with love for dunya and the pleasures of the dunya. And then there's no love for Allah. You see, shaitan, the ulama always tell us, he was arif. He knew more about Allah than any one of us. Uh, he was abid. He worshipped Allah more than any one of us. He was an alim. He had more knowledge than any one of us. But he was not an ashik. He did not have the true love for Allah ta'ala in his heart. Now, when, when you have true love for Allah in your heart, the, you give up sin, your heart becomes cleaner. The love for Allah uh, flourishes in your heart. When you have love for Allah in your heart, then it generates obedience. Allah tells us in a hadith that puts it, Yabna Adam, Khalaqtul Ashia'a kullaha min ajlik, wa khalaqtuka li, wa khalaqtuka min ajli. I've created everything else. I've created everything else for you, but I've created you for me. I have created everything else to be a benefit to you, but I've created you, O son of Adam, to worship me. Are we fulfilling that mandate? Are we fulfilling that responsibility of worshiping Allah? Allah says in another hadith, he puts it, Ya abdi, inni laka muhibbun, fabihaqqi alayka kun li muhibba, that, oh my servant, I love you. I love you. Now, by virtue of the rights that I have over you, when are you going to start loving me? When we say we love Allah, we have to put it to a test. They say, the test of true love is to see whether you give preference to the commands of your beloved over all other commands, the commands of your nurse, the commands of society, the commands of the fashion and the, the, the ideology of the day. You give preference to the company of your beloved over all other company. When you're in the company of your friends or your family and it's time to be in the masjid, time to perform salah, whose company do you prefer? And the third, that you give preference to the pleasure of the beloved over everyone else's pleasure. min Allahi akbar. Allah says the greatest pleasure that you need to strive for the greatest pleasure that you need to desire is the pleasure of Allah. Ta'ala. When we want to become the beloved of Allah, they say, You must give yourself over totally. Nothing must remain for you. So we need to give ourselves over to Allah in totality. Like Ibrahim والسلام, did, Allah mentions, Wa Ibrahim wafa. Ibrahim والسلام, fulfilled that, uh, that responsibility. He gave himself over to Allah wa ta'ala totally. So the point I'm driving home, brothers, sisters, mothers, is that it's time to once again evaluate the state of our relationship with Allah. That is Allah the number one priority in my life? Uh, what is the state of my daily, weekly, monthly relationship with Allah? And how can I use this Qulhiyya and Qurbani, these 10 days, the days of Hajj, these Ashur al Hurum, as, 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 as a catalyst uh, to once again uh, motivate myself to come closer to Allah wa to, to remain closer to Allah wa ta'ala. the life and the story of Ibrahim wasalam, the rituals of Hajj that we will follow even if we are not performing the rituals of Udhiyya which many of us inshallah will be performing it needs to inspire us to come closer to Allah to develop a stronger relationship with Allah like Ibrahim wasalam, did there are many ways of doing that we, we spoke about those 10 things uh, that if we do during these first 10 days, uh, inshallah, it will help us to maximize on these 10 days. And it will also help us then, if we do it with ikhlas and sincerity, to come closer to Allah. Wa ta'ala. Life is short. Life is fragile. Life is temporary. Uh, if, these, if this last year hasn't taught us this, then I don't know uh, what we have learned. And if, we haven't, if we're not going to learn it now, then Allah alone knows when we are going to learn it. Who knows whether we'll be alive next year to witness these 10 days, to witness this month of Dhul Hijjah, to witness these Ashwari Hurum. So many were with us last year this time, they know were with us. They were younger than us. They were healthier than us. Just this morning, I, we lost an alim here in the locality where I live. 
hardly 45 years of age, succumbed to the pandemic, COVID. Uh, he used to work many years with us uh, at, at, many years ago at Radio Islam. And everyone is in shock. Such a young, healthy, vibrant individual doing the khidmah of deen. But uh, that is what Allah wa ta'ala, is reminding us of. You're going to live only once. And on the day of Qiyamah, success will depend on the state of your heart. Illa man salim. Except those who come to Allah wa ta'ala, with a clean heart. Except those who come to Allah wa ta'ala, with a sound heart. Now how can a heart ever be clean? And how can a heart ever be sound if uh, it does not contain love for Allah? If it does not contain an inclination towards uh, obedience of Allah? Ibrahim is the man of the season. Let's learn more about the lessons from his life. The story we know. Let's read. Let's, let's step into the lectures of the scholars. Let's, say, let's look at what the Quran is telling us. Allah says, وَمَن يَدْغَبُ عَمْ مِلَّةِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِلَّا مَنْ سَفِّهَا نَسَّةً Only the one who makes a fool of himself will turn away from the path of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Nabi sallallahu alayhi salam came, ulama tell us, to once again put humanity on the path of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. These 10 days of Dhul Hijjah is associated with Hajj and Qurbani. Uh, in there we commemorate the actions of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam and the family of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. The legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is, is great, it's profound. He's the father of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. He's accepted by all the major faiths. But what are his qualities? What are the lessons? We don't focus on that enough. Look at the Quran tells us, Inna Ibrahim ala halim. Ibrahim was forbearing. He was tolerant. Tolerance is a rare quality in our lives today. A rare quality. Allah, he was compassionate. He was soft-hearted. Munib, he was repentant. Earlier on, when listing the 10 things that we need to do during these 10 days, I mentioned that Tawbah is one of the most important things. Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. Because he had these remarkable qualities, he became like an entire nation by himself. You know, we say this person is the team. This person carries the entire team. There may be 11 people in total, but this person is, is the equivalent of the other 10. Ibrahim salam was an entire nation. He was obedient to Allah. Hanifa. He was pure in his faith. He was grateful to Allah. For the bounties that Allah wa ta'ala had, uh, had given him. Look, Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam is the Prophet who gave us the name that we have. He made dua. Rabbana waj'alna muslimaini lak. Wa min durriyatina ummatan muslimatan lak. That Allah make me and my son Ismail Muslims. Meaning submissive to you. And from our progeny, let there be an entire nation. Who will be Muslims, who will be submissive. Rabbana wab'ath fihim rasula. He made dua. Oh Allah sent a Prophet. Uh, to them uh, that will, 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 will uh, guide them. So Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, the greatest of Allah's creation, to guide us back to the path of Ibrahim Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. That is what we need to ponder over. That is what we need to reflect on during these 10 days in order to be able to make it the best 10 days, in order to be able to maximize on it, in order to be able to secure closeness to Allah. Ibrahim Alayhi Salam was the ultimate khalil. He was the ultimate friend. Of Allah wa ta'ala. That does not mean that you and I cannot also become friends of Allah wa ta'ala. Let's make that intention now. Let's then have a plan of action and let's make an effort. The results are in the hands of Allah wa ta'ala. May Allah grant me and all of us the tawfiq. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.